After nearly a decade of negotiations, Canada is set to sign a free trade deal with South Korea. Stephen Harper is in Seoul for the negotiations. Let me just give you a quick background on why this is such a big deal. The deal would be Canada's first trade deal in the Asia-Pacific region. There are concerns, though, from the auto sector that the deal would end the tariff on car imports that are flooding the market with Korean cars. So you may see more Kias and Hyundais. However, Canada's agricultural industry may benefit from increased sales of beef and pork. Trade with the South Korea took a dive after the U.S. and the EU signed trade deals in the last few years. So pork producers here basically lost a lot of business. So could the deal improve Canada's trade imbalance with South Korea? Will it be a gateway to the Asia-Pacific or will it hurt Canada's auto sector? Is it good or bad deal? Joining me from Toronto, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade, Aaron O'Toole is here. In Vancouver, Don Davies, the NDP's international trade critic, is here. And with me in studio, Wayne Easter, the Liberal public safety critic. All right, let's start with you, Mr. O'Toole. Uh, the auto industry... Uh, which is, by the way, the biggest chunk of the business we do with uh, South Korea. They're not happy with the deal, saying over 30,000 jobs could be lost in Ontario. Right now, there's about a, I don't know, 6.1% tariff on imported vehicles. They say if that's removed, Kias and Hyundai's Korean cars are going to flood the market and put them out of business. What do you say to the auto sector? Well, listen, Evan, this deal has tremendous potential for all sectors, including in the long term, auto. You know, you quoted a job loss number that was not from the automakers. It was actually a Unifor, a CAW number of 30,000, which has no basis in reality whatsoever. They're quoting a 2006 study that's been widely dismissed. So how many uh, jobs could be lost? We, we anticipate no negative benefit for the auto industry in Ontario, which if you look at our industry here, what we manufacture in Canada it's almost exclusively for export to the U.S. So we make some vehicles that are sold here in Canada, but Canada for decades, has, has most of our manufacturing has been sold to the U.S. We don't make for Korea at the moment now. We, we haven't had a diversified uh, auto sector sell, making here in Canada and selling abroad, and we don't an anticipate any impact. So if demand rate re remains high for these, these cars that we manufacture here and trucks, that that will continue to have them be sold. So you're, you're so just, I just want to make sure I got, you're saying there'll be no, I want this on the record, no negative impact for the Canadian auto sector. Uh, they're looking at if you remove this 6.1% tariff, they think it's going to hurt them. You're saying no, it won't, so the government won't compensate, nothing like that, you're just going to let it go? Well, let, let's look at that, uh, at that, Evan. The Kia and Hyundai you mentioned off the top, about half of the ones we see driving around the, the streets of Canada right now come into our country duty-free already because they're made in North America. Right. So that's about half of them now, and that's increasing. And Canadians have been demanding some of these cars that we don't manufacture, the, the smaller types uh, of vehicles here. Um, so the, there's never really been an issue. Consumers will still have their choice. About half of them are coming in tariff-free now. Um, it, but more if a deal that's is finalized, their, that's, their, that, that's what Unifor's point is, right? That you, you take the tariff off, you just they get even more cars pouring in, and that um, makes it hurts the job sector, the auto sector even more. But they're not displacing the types of cars we're making here, Evan. That's that's what I'm trying to to, to get through here is what we make in Canada, including in my area, the Durham region, with General Motors. We make vehicles that are primarily consumed by Canadians, and about 88 percent of them in the United States. So we sell to that market. We will continue to do that. So the jobs related to those, those, uh, those yeah. auto manufacturing jobs in Ontario are for North America. So there are already vehicles coming in. So a U of T study from 2012 uh, said that the impact would be less than 1% of displacement in, in, auto, in the auto sector, and, you know, we've had 4,000 vehicles. So, so Don Davies, what's the problem here? You know, uh, other sectors, the agriculture sector has been hurt by the other free trade deals. They say we'll benefit, uh, and the auto sector may have to compete anyway. What's your view on this, Mr. Davies? Is this a good deal? Well, we think that growing our trade with South Korea is I important. Uh, but there's no way to assess whether this deal will be good or not for Canada until we see the actual text of the agreement. Uh, typical of the Conservatives, the entire process has been shrouded in secrecy with an utter lack of transparency. Um, the opposition has been excluded. Many stakeholders across the country have been shut out. 
and that's no way to conduct trade policy. In fact, Sorry, it's not to the be way fair, that other there, countries are But this has been going on for 10 years, though, to be fair. Well, this is negotiated for 10 years. Well, well, we'll get to that, Evan, but uh, both the United States and the EU are both conducting their trade policy with far more transparency, uh, allowing legislators to read the text during negotiations or actually revealing uh, chapters to the public for comment while negotiations are going on. That's something the Conservatives don't do. But what we do know is that uh, the Conservatives have botched this file from the beginning. They allowed, as you pointed out, both the EU and the United States to secure deals three and two years ago, and that's hurt, hurt Canadian exporters who have lost a lot of market share, and of course there will be significant impact on the Canadian auto sector, depending on how carefully and competently those provisions have been negotiated in this deal, which is what we'll be watching and looking at very closely. Uh, all right. Uh Wayne Easter, what, what's your take on this? Uh, we've, we're getting statements in here from Unifor, which is um, one of the key unions in the auto sector. What, what's your take on this? Good deal? Well, uh, we'll have to see the final text to be sure, but uh, the Liberal Party has been basically supporting free trade in, in principle. I've, when I sat on the uh, Trade Committee, have pushed uh, Ed Fast every time he was before the committee. Why was he allowing the Americans and the Europeans to displace us in that, in that market? In fact, they've been at meetings in the United States where their Secretary of Agriculture has basically bragged about displacing Canadian beef and pork in the South Korean market because they had a deal and, and we didn't. Uh, and what I can't understand in terms of the auto sector and the government's negotiation, and Don is right in this, they're very, very secret of this government where it's at, but if you look at the American agreement with the South Koreans, they have a very precise agreement as it relates to the auto sector. They assure more American cars will go into the South Korean market, uh, and they, they have a more complementary agreement than we believe that uh, the Canadian government is negotiating. But do you, what do you do? Are you pitting the agricultural community against Absolute, the auto sector? Absolutely Mr. not. Absolutely not. There is no reason why there can't be winners on both sides of this agreement. The Americans, in terms of their negotiation, as I said, uh, negotiate a, a quite a precise agreement as it relates to their auto industry, which would expand uh, some of their automobiles going into the United States, into the Korean market, uh, and give the American automator, automakers protection against some of the protectionist measures in Korea. All right, uh, so there's no reason why it can't be done, that it's win-win on all sides. Mr. O'Toole, I got a statement here. Unifor, which represents 300,000 workers, 39,000 um, auto workers, th they're saying... Could the government make sure, because of the trade deficit, I think last year we sent about $3.4 billion to South Korea, uh, and I think they sent oh, $6 billion, I think there's something like that. Um, they said, would you consider this, tying reductions in tariffs um, to measurable targets to reducing trade imbalances in key industries like auto, one, requiring Korean firms to invest and create jobs here as a condition of a tariff-free access and ensuring the government keeps the necessary powers to intervene directly to remedy trade imbalances. What do you make of those? Now, those are the union suggestions. I, I think, Evan, like any agreement, including the one we did with Europe, there's going to be a transition period, which includes the time to ratify uh, the agreement and for people and sectors to reposition themselves, really to take advantage uh, uh, of this free trade agreement. Look, my, my friends here will criticize you know, we, we've got a trade imbalance, all these sorts of things, yet they tend to stand in between our government advancing our trade agenda to diversify our trade relationships. So we have a great trade relationship with the United States and within NAFTA, and our government's been out there tirelessly growing new markets for Canadian goods and services. And, and the Prime Minister's been clear. He never makes a deal until he thinks it's in the net overall benefit uh, of the country. Do so we have not all here the deals? to can rural we, versus urban and, and auto versus farming. Can we get farming. the details? Don Davies says he wants the details. What about so the whole country can analyze who benefits? When will the I, details, will they be released before the signatures on the paper? I, I think you'll see, uh, if the final stretch, if it's concluded, you'll see in a similar fashion to, to the European deal, much more detail right away on a regional and industrial breakdown and look, the Prime Minister has personally got involved in this because, as you said, this has been out there for 10 years in one form or another, and it's the first agreement with an Asian country for free trade. And free trade overall will increase, it will, will shrink that trade imbalance that exists right now because our traditional mm -hmm. trading partners in the U.S. and in, in Europe 
have had slow to sluggish growth. So I they haven't been I importing as much stuff. I think the point has this to is be this. made here, though, while the government is negotiating trade deals, all we're getting on a surplus deficit basis is more deficits on trade uh, from this particular government. But Unifor suggestions, uh, Evan, are good ones. If you look at how, uh, uh, how say, Honda and Japan uh, deal in the trade industry in Canada. They actually put a plant in Canada and create some jobs here. And I think that's what Unifor is uh, is after. So it comes down to how does Harper and his crew negotiate this deal so as to benefit Canada, or are they just signing a deal to get a deal? Don, that's the bottom Don line. Don Davis, you want to weigh in real quick? Yeah, I mean, the, the experience of the United States and the European Union are directly opposite of what Aaron just said. Since they signed trade deals, their uh, trade deficits in automobiles in particular have gone drastically up. Uh, I've talked to a lot of American uh, business, uh, business people who have said that uh, the Koreans have to be watched very carefully because um, they, they bring in a lot of non-tariff barriers. And what happens is, is that uh, the Americans have not found that they've had the market access that they were promised. And so this is why I think Unifor's suggestions, as Wayne said, are, are very good. We should be expecting that any trade deal results in the creation of good Canadian jobs here in Canada. And, and any deal that doesn't agreement. do that, any trade, a trade deal just doesn't do that by magic. I mean, like, like Justin Trudeau said, budgets uh, balance themselves magically. He's wrong and the Conservatives are wrong when they say that trade agreements magically create jobs. They have to be well-negotiated, structured agreements, and we'll be watching carefully to see if the Conservatives right. have delivered. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll be looking at the details. Uh, Stephen Harper in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, interesting details surrounding that trade deal. Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of International Trade, Aaron O'Toole, always good to have you on, sir. And Thank the you. NDP's international trade critic, Don Davies, good to have you on, sir. And the Liberal public safety critic who's in Ottawa. Remember, the MPs are back in their ridings for two weeks. Uh, but Wayne Easter's here. And this is far from his riding, but we'll try You're to figure that one out. Back for tonight. All right, gentlemen, thanks. Thanks, thanks Evan.